Good afternoon. Thank you for jumping on the call today. Um, virtual Home Buyer Seminar, First Time Home Buyer's Guide. Uh, just a reminder, the call will be recorded today, so please make sure that your video is shut off and you are muted. And uh, thank you again for joining the call today. Brian, take it away. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks, Zareen. Uh, welcome, everyone. Our, vir our virtual home buying seminar today is on the topic of first time home buyers. And uh, why don't we move to the next screen? Serene, wonderful. So my name is Brian McCown. I'm the AVP of Mortgage Operations here at Michigan First uh, Mortgage. And we've got a couple of great speakers that we're going to introduce in a second, uh, Justin Murkowski and Milton Buford. Uh, again, this is on the first time home buyers guide. So we're going to talk a little bit about what that is uh, and get into that, that topic and maybe demystify a couple of things and then walk through some tips and tricks on, on how to best navigate uh, the mortgage process, the real estate, the home buying process in general, uh, from a first time home buyer perspective. And then we'll, uh, we'll end with some closing marks. Um, just as a reminder, if you have any questions, uh, please go ahead, type them into the chat. We've, we've all got that up. We've got that monitored. So as we go through something jars in your mind, you know, uh, fire off a question, if we can answer it, um, during the call, we certainly will. And we'll, we'll try our best to do that. Otherwise we will follow up, um, with, with answers for all the attendees. So I want to first introduce Justin Rutkowski. He's a loan officer here at Michigan First Mortgage. Justin, good afternoon. Wonder good afternoon, Brian. About yourself. Uh, well, thank you all for joining us today. Um, a little bit about me. Uh, I live in the Grand Rapids area, so um, just a couple hours on 96 across the state from uh, if you're from the Metro Detroit area. Um, I've been here about 10 years. My wife and I uh, have two daughters, Claire and Jojo. Uh, Claire is a, the typical oldest sister, uh, and Jojo is a bit of a hellion. So we're, we, they keep us busy for sure. Um, a little bit about me, a huge, uh, sports fan in general, but big Detroit, uh, sports fan, uh, especially the lions and the tigers. Um, I still play baseball and uh, I also umpire at the high school and college baseball levels. Uh, currently work mostly in the GLIAC conference and also do some JUCO and uh, work in the MIAA as well. So um, that's a, a hobby of mine. Um, prior to being in the mortgage business, I uh, spent five years in branch banking um, at a couple of the larger banks. Um, that you may have heard of, um, but I really wanted to be in a position where I could help people um, make the biggest financial decision that they make typically. For 95% of people, buying a house is the biggest financial decision they'll ever have to make, and I really enjoy walking hand-in-hand -hand with people um, and helping them make those decisions. Great. Thank you uh, very much, and, and we all will be rooting for you with the, the four-year-old, it sounds like in particular. <laughs> so, um, Milton Buford, uh, Associate Broker with Amon Realty. Welcome to the call. Why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Thanks for having me, Brian, and welcome everyone. My name is Milton Buford. Um, I attended Central Michigan University. I have a degree in education and uh, leadership administration. Um, however, I decided to have my own children. I have a four-year-old son, six-year-old daughter, and uh, I've been a teacher for 12 years, couldn't quite grasp how I was going to mold the minds of 30 students plus, as well as take care of little ones. So um, I got the idea to kind of serve people another way. Instead of education, I would do it in educating people about real estate. Um, it kind of helped me flex my time. And in that, um, you know, I was able to still fulfill my heart as a public servant and, you know, just teach people how to, um, for the most part, understand the process and just kind of utilize me and my, um, you know, position and power to, um, you know, make the decisions for them. But um, definitely turn it on the light so that uh, they're not blinded by the whole process of buying a home. You know, it's, it's with, we're fortunate today with, with Milton and Justin, you know, you, you heard service, you hear education and I know that's a big part of the approach, and it's one of the reasons why we like doing these virtual home buyer seminars. So, um, why don't we just jump right in? We've met everyone. Um, so, 
I'm going to direct the conversation for those of you on the call, and I see we continue to add more. That's that's fantastic. So um, let's jump right in. And uh, Justin, I'm going to start with you. Is now a good time to buy a home? Why is it or why isn't it a good time? Uh, I well, I don't think we would be doing this call if it wasn't, but I think it is. I think it's the second best time to buy a home. Um, the first best time to buy a home is always five years ago. So you are always going to be in a better financial spot if you bought a home five years ago. Um, having said that, none of us have come up with that time machine needed to do that. So yes, I do believe now is a good time to buy a home for a couple of reasons. Um, number one, I... A lot of, um, if you listen to the news, you hear things about interest rates, you know, being up versus a couple years ago. But what I found is that um, there are still lots of opportunities to get into a home that's affordable today um, if you're working with the right people um, and you have a, a you're going to hear me one of the reoccurring themes you're going to hear me talk a lot about today is, is having a strategy or a game plan. Um, I think that if you're, um, on uh, trying to figure things out on your own, doing research on the internet on your own, a lot of times it feels like you're drinking out of a fire hose. Um, but one of the reasons why I think it's important to work with people in the industry is because you get that personalized game plan or personalized strategy that's going to be able to help you. Another thing too, with rates being, um, a little bit higher is that we're not seeing as many of the insane bidding wars um, where people have to offer $25,000, $50,000 above asking price. Um, we saw a lot of that back in 2021, 2022. Um, we really don't see that as much anymore. Um, so a lot of times if you see a home listed on Zillow for $200,000, you are able to get it around that, maybe even sometimes a little bit less. So Jesse, you know, you brought that up and I think we all hear that a lot, that that bidding war experience, there was a lot going on in 2020, uh, 2021 for sure. Do you think that, not that there aren't bidding wars on certain homes, but do you think that magnitude were sort of through that environment? You mentioned a little bit, but is it a little, is it a little calmer uh, in the, in the market with um, people trying to uh, put offers in on homes? Absolutely. And one of the things that we saw a lot back then was you had um, real estate investors buying up lots and lots of properties because from an investor standpoint, um, a 3% interest rate on a mortgage is free money. Um, so a lot of times um, your first time home buyer is trying to compete against a grizzled real estate veteran. And a, a lot of our buyers were getting smoked, unfortunately. Um, today, we're not seeing it as much. So I think that, um, yeah, having said that, it's it's much more of a level playing field for for buyers. And I think first time home buyers have, and we're going to get into this a little bit later, but there's so many different first time home buyer programs out there um, that are, that we can take advantage of to make that happen. Yeah. So uh, let's say I'm someone interested. I, I haven't owned a home before. How do I how do I buy a home? Like, what are those initial steps that we have to go through to become a homeowner? Absolutely. So the first step I would say, and I believe Zarina is going to post a link in the chat um, If uh, with just a, a quick questionnaire to get some more information if you're in a place where you want to get a pre-approval. But that's another thing that you're going to hear us talk a lot about is the pre-approval. Um, and I tell I tell folks this all the time. If you if we're having a conversation, um, very seldomly is it a it's not a approve or deny situation because a lot of times you go in for to apply for credit, a credit card, an auto loan, or something, and it's an approve or deny situation. And and whoever is taking the application, you're just you're just a number, right? Um, this the mortgage process and the pre approval process is much more of a partnership. So. I'm going to, I would say probably 60% of the applications I take, um, so the, the member that I'm working with needs to work on one of four, three, one of four things, income, assets, credit, and liabilities. Those are the four things that we look at. Um, I'd say about 40% of the time, the member checks all four boxes and we're ready to go ahead and issue pre-approval. 
A lot of times though, it's a, it's a conversation of, Hey, you know, if we, I can take a look at your credit and maybe if we get a couple things paid off, um, you're going to put, you're going to raise your score or maybe it's a, um, a liability situation where, um, there's a lot of like small credit cards out there that you have. If we pay these down, it's going to free up some of the, the, um, and not, not to get too technical, but you'll, you'll have more purchase power, um, with less debt. Uh, sometimes it's a savings thing. Hey, you know, right now you're in a good spot, but we just need a little bit more in savings. Let's take the next couple months and, and try to get the savings account. So it's a very, it's very much a, you, you need to talk to somebody who, uh, a mortgage lender, um, I'm, again, more than happy to talk with anybody that's on this call today at some point. Um, about your specific situation and what the steps that we need to take um, to get that pre-approval done. Again, sometimes it's a very quick, easy process on the front end, but sometimes it's a three to six month process where I'm actively working with you uh, um, to get you where you need to be to have that pre-approval. So with the, with the pre-approval, is that required? Um, it required to like go look at a house yeah to go to to buy a home does someone have to get pre-approved or is it a strong recommendation i would say that unless you've got you know 300 grand sitting in the bank that you're going to pay cash for the house i would say yeah you got to have a pre-approval um other and and for your it's for your um it, it's for you too like the you'll know your, you'll know your budget potential you'll know how much home you can afford you'll know what your monthly payment is before you enter into the contract and milton's going to talk a little bit about more what that looks like um but you'll also you'll save yourself some heartache because i've talked with a, a handful of folks where they they saw a home on zillow that they absolutely fallen in love with and they weren't able to get the pre-approval in time to actually get in to see it and write an offer on it and it had sold by the time that they had gotten that done so i would say if you really, if you're serious about wanting to buy a home, absolutely, the pre-approval is a must-have. Okay, excellent. You know, and and Milton, I want I want to turn over to you right now. Obviously, from the realtor side, um, let's just say we go through and we get pre-approved. Um, I'd like to know what the steps are, but really quickly, from the realtor perspective, how important is somebody walking in with a pre-approval? Great question, Brian. Uh, it's very important to walk in with a pre-approval. Uh, simply because the buying process could go anywhere from 30 to 45 days, typically. Uh, sometimes it's longer, if, you know, it's a probate situation where you're trying to purchase a home that's in an estate, or sometimes it could go um, as low as 15 days or sooner if you're working with a guy like Justin, who's super awesome, by the way. Um, however, what you want that pre-approval for is because that a listing agent who's representing the seller has um, a fiduciary duty to protect all interests of the seller. So they want to go through every candidate with a fine tooth comb, making sure that you are a worthy candidate, which means they're not only going to look at your pre-approval, more likely they're going to call the loan officer associated with that approval or the lender to find out, you know, not only did you get approved, but have your bank statements, your W-2s or 1099s, uh, pay stubs, have all of those things been collected. And, you know, they're going to basically vet you and go back to their seller to say, you know, I think this is a strong candidate um, or not. So you definitely, you know, it definitely helps. You don't necessarily have to have one, but 99.9% .9 of the time, uh, like Justin said, I've, I've had a situation like that. A friend was kind of, I was shopping with them, shopping with them. We found the home they wanted, reached out to the agent to be proactive, and the agent was all in. But by the time my client got the pre-approval, you know, they are already had received another offer. So uh, my client missed out on it. So you definitely want to have that. Um, it's your Willy Wonka golden ticket, if you will. I like that. I like the, gold, the golden ticket there. Um, so, okay, you, let's say I'm, I'm the borrower. I'm coming to you. I have my pre-approval. What are the steps from your standpoint of uh, making an offer on a home? How does how does all that work? That's another great question, Brian. Um, I, I usually like to do a, a sort of consultation with the client to find out what their wants and needs are, uh, because it depends. Uh, for example, if somebody looking to you know maybe have a place to stay, but kind of start building some um, 
cash flow, they may be interested in like a duplex or something like that. Whereas um, it's going to be structured a bit different from someone who just wants a forever home, right? So that person that wants to duplex, they're probably looking at living in it five years, maybe a little bit more, and then, you know, relocating, but hoping to gain some equity out of that property. Um, the person that's looking to buy their forever home, you know, they're probably going to go all out. So we kind of go through those uh, preliminaries um, as far as what that house must have, you know, what are they? And of, of course, there's no perfect home. So what I usually try to do is go over, you know, three to five criteria that the house must have. Um, sometimes I kind of scooch over to the lender side and uh, I'll, I'll try to get an idea of their budget just because sometimes, even though you may be, say, pre-approved for half a million dollars, you may not want to pay what uh, what that mortgage looked like monthly. So we get down to, you know, what that monthly payment is and kind of correlate that with what the um, buyer is looking for. And from there, we we'll map out, you know, we'll look at the market and see, uh, you know, what areas or, you know, what can they get with that budget? And we'll make the adjustments from there. You know, hearing you both talk, it sounds very much like uh, from a first time home buyer perspective, this is a this is a, a, a team sport that you're going through. You're going to have, uh, you know, uh, the mortgage people on your team. You're going to have real estate agents on your team. Um, and obviously there's other there's other uh, parties in that transaction. But really sort of having those uh, two good coaches uh, to guide you through each of the two aspects is critically important. Um you know, we, we had talked a little bit earlier about um, uh, the different loan types. Justin, you hinted to that. And what are some of the different loan types out there for a first time home buyer? And if, and if I am one, how would I find the best one that suits me and my situation? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't want to bore you with the nitty gritty details. So I'll be brief on this because we're going to talk specifically about the first time home buyer programs we have here at Michigan First Later. Um, conventional, FHA, VA, and USDA. So conventional and FHA um, have low down payment options as low as 3%. Um, and each one of those, there are pros and cons um, as far as which is going to be the best fit for you. Um, so, uh, FHA sometimes has a little bit lower rate, um, but you have a little bit higher mortgage insur insurance in some cases. And so, um, you know, again, having that conversation uh, is going to be the best way to identify which one of those is going to be best for you. A couple other options, and these are a little bit less common, um, but the VA loans and the USDA loans. A VA loan, you have to be a, a veteran or uh, I believe a surviving spouse of a, a veteran to, um, to qualify for one of those. And a USDA loan, you have to be buying a property specifically in a rural area. So um, all of those, um, you know, the, to to summarize, um, it's 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 my job to take to have the conversation with you to figure out what your budget is, what your expenses are, um, where you're looking to buy a home. Especially in the case of a USDA loan, it matters tremendously. Um, I wouldn't want to issue a pre-approval for a, a USDA loan and then, hey, I found a, a property in Livonia I want to buy. Like, the, it's not going to work. So um, having those conversations is going to be the best way to identify what what loan product is going to be the best fit for you. And it really, it sounds like it really starts with, you know, what what is that particular individual? What's their circumstances? What's their needs and desires and goals and things like that? Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to jump maybe a little detail, but this question always comes up when we talk about the loan, you know, loans, getting a mortgage, uh, buying a home, it's, uh, it's not all covered by the, the mortgage amount. So right. are there some upfront expenses? Say you've got, you're buying a home, it's 150, 200,000. What are some of the upfront expenses that you should expect and understand that are, are part of the, the transaction? Absolutely. So um, I'll break it down into uh, two different categories. So you've got your down payment, um, it, which is it, the I'm using an example of one hundred and fifty thousand dollar purchase with a three percent down payment. So a couple different things that are going to factor into this. So your let's say your three percent down payment, that's going to be forty five hundred dollars. 
And um, the second part is going to be the the closing costs and prepaid. So um, any closing costs that are associated with the loan, um, title fees, appraisal, all of that stuff goes into one side. And when I say prepaids, I mean, you're going to, as a homeowner now, you're going to be on the hook for paying property taxes and homeowners insurance. And for first time home buyers, um, specifically, uh, if you're putting less than 20% down, um, we put that into what's called an escrow account. So uh, an escrow account is when your property taxes come due, the money's already there, it's been set aside, we pay those on your behalf. So you don't have to worry about the, the $3,000 property tax bill, you've, you've, as part of your mortgage payment, you've contributed to that uh, throughout the year. So when the bill comes due, the money's already there, you don't have to worry about it. Um, so but when we close on the loan, we have to fund that escrow account with enough money to make it to whenever the next bill is going to be due. So um, so I typically estimate um, between three to three to five thousand dollars for closing costs and prepaids. Um, it, it, you know, if your property taxes are eight hundred dollars a year, it's going to be less. If they're five thousand dollars a year, it's going to be more. So a, a handful of things that can swing it for your specific situation. Um, but your monthly payment on that is going to be around $1,175. So I know a lot of people that pay more and more in rent than $1,175. So that's, um, one of the things that, um, you know, we can talk about later too, are the different, uh, options to reduce the, the amount that you're going to have to bring out of pocket, uh, to the closing table when you buy your home. Yeah. And, and again, that's, that's a lot of those costs are for, uh, the mortgage itself to get it all and you don't know, get it set up. But Milton, I want to come back to you because sure. it costs money to own a home too. There's other expenses that come with uh, just routine maintenance, things of that nature. So um, to, to help the, the people on the call and prepare first time homeowners, once you've got the home, what are some things that you should be aware of, of other expenses? Yeah, most definitely, Brian. Um, well, first and foremost, there's a rule of thumb that people, if they can, they should try to set aside around 3% of the home's value for the maintenance items. Uh, some of the easy things that you should make sure is done right away, any cracks around the foundation, try to get those sealed up. Um, often I have all types of uh, contractors or whatnot, so I try to help people with their search. Um, the dirt, you know, as far as how the, you know, land may be. Uh, butt up against the property, you want to make sure that it's graded away. So I believe it's a couple of feet up, a couple of feet out. That way, when it rains or if, you know, you're having gutter issues, the water is water aversion. So you basically want to keep the water away. Um, you definitely want to look at the water heater. You know, I'm a realtor and I bought my house, my house in 2019. The water heater was was gone after the first week of me living here. So, you know, I had to get that taken care of because we didn't have any hot water. Um, you know, your furnace and uh, AC, you know, you want to consider that. However, there's all types of programs that DTE and other companies utilize where you could pay as little as $13 a month. And if something were to, you know, go wrong with those, you're insured. Um, the roof, you know, you want to take a look at the roof to see, you um, it kind of goes hand in hand. I was going to say trees, you know, because you want to make sure there's no roots growing in a piping system, but also, you know, as leaves and things or branches start to try to creep into a gutter, you want to look for that. There should be nothing from the foundation to the roof um, interfering with the property. Uh, you want to keep all of those things away. And I will honestly say those are probably the most important, the roof and the foundation, um, you know, checking for any signs of mold in the basement from water, any uh, signs of, you know, odors or what have you. Windows, you could kind of tell, but those are important too. But those are really your your major factors. Everything else uh, is, is mostly cosmetic. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll, I will throw in plumbing and electrical as well. So you really want to know before you purchase the home, you want to know what shape it's in. And, and obviously you we go through with the investors uh, or uh, an inspector, you know, to, to help guide you. And that's something obviously you can you can help with. Um, amazing. We've got about a minute left. Um, and so really quickly, um, Justin, can you give us, we talked about some of the first time homebuyer programs available in about 60 seconds. Can you uh, walk us through some of those? 
Yep. So Mishta is one of them. Uh, Mishta provides you uh, $10,000 uh, to go towards your down payment and closing costs with a minimum 1% out of pocket. Um, so the, the scenario I uh, talked about earlier, the $150,000 purchase, 3% down, um, without Mishta comes out to be around ten eleven thousand dollars with Mishta 1500 bucks out of pocket roughly um so that um so again how to qualify for that those are more nuanced conversations that if you want more information we can have those conversations offline uh, I put my link in the in the chat box if you want to click on there uh, fill out a quick application um I'll, I'll get with you and we can uh, and we can have that conversation. Um, another one, there's seasonal programs that we have access to um, that are large grants that are available in the spring and the fall um, that that have up to uh, $25,000 uh, to go towards your down payment closing costs, which is it's a grant. It's incredible, um, but they're they're limited availability first come first serve basis. Um, and then the last one is our Detroit down payment assistance program, where if you um, certain things have to go right to qualify. You have to live in the city of Detroit and be purchasing there. Um, some other stipulations as well, but again, that's another $25,000 grant. Um, if, if you're able to check those boxes. Yeah. You know, and, and there is a lot of, uh, of money out there from the state and the federal level, um, that filter down to our local communities that, that help people cover those closing costs, you know, as, as was mentioned. Rent might be a little higher than owning a home from a mortgage payment standpoint, uh, but saving up that money can be tough. And these these grants can help with that. So, um, but, you know, looking back on the screen, um, I want to go back to each of you and uh, start with Justin. You know, what are some three takeaways uh, for the folks on this call? Uh Obviously, getting a pre-approval letter is is vital to your search. That's that's where it starts, and that's um, you can't you can't really get off to a good start without getting a pre-approval letter done. Um, and as far as the process is concerned, I know there's some people uh, from here on the east side of the state. Uh, I obviously live in Grand Rapids, but if if we decide to work together, I'd like for you to consider me to consider your coach. Um, I'm the one that's going to be working with you specifically on um, on your you know, on finances, on your situation. Um, so I, I'm your Dan Campbell and Milton is going to be your Jared Goff. He's going to be the one out on the field working with you, uh, talking about houses, taking you to see houses. Um, and then your Amon Ross St. Brown, who is uh, just is, you know, you're you're out on the field and you're scoring touchdowns when um, when we're in a position where we can do our job. So. Um, and then as far as when to start the process, I would say it's always a good idea to have the conversation, um, you know, at six months in advance. So if you think you might be ready in the spring, now's the time to start having a conversation, because if there are things that we find that maybe we either need to work on credit wise, income wise, uh, or maybe it's a, it's not even something that we need to work on. It just might put you in a little bit better position. Um, it's so much easier to solve those problems six months ahead of time. Uh, doesn't mean that I can't get a pre-approval out and get you under contract in a week. I've done it before. Um, but it's always good to have the conversation sooner rather than later. Um, and it it makes it'll make the experience be uh, much smoother. Excellent. Excellent. Milton, what are some three takeaways that uh, that you've got? Oh, it's a very tough question, Brian. <laughs> Justin, did an awesome job. I would just say, you know, it's definitely good to figure out what your wants are. Um, if you want to buy a house for the long term or short term, uh, keep in mind, an average person live in a house about seven or eight years. OK, um, think about that. Also, I would suggest considering I think, Justin, I don't know if you mentioned it, but that's another nuanced question. Just when you are in the process, once we put together an offer, do not use it, use that time to uh, jeopardize credit. So don't open any credit cards, buy any vehicles, things of that nature. Um, that's very important. And um, yeah, just uh, make sure you're punctual with getting documentation in. Everything else will take care of itself. Well, thank you uh, to, to Justin and uh, Milton. 
Uh, as you can see up on the screen from the, the mortgage side, if you uh, have general questions, uh, info at michiganfirstmortgage.com. Any questions you have, happy to help on, on that side. You can go and apply with Justin or any of our qualified loan officers at michiganfirst.com slash mortgage. Our phone number's up there, 800-664-3828. And again, we, we have folks available uh, all the time to discuss. Justin's individual contact information is there. And then and also from Milton uh, on the, the realtor side, uh, his, uh, his both website and his personal email. I'm assuming, gentlemen, those are cell phone numbers so you can folks can always get a hold of you uh, when they have any questions. Um, I do want to mention, you know, one of the things that uh, that we have at Michigan First is insurance. And when you buy a home, uh, you do need to have uh, homeowners insurance uh, on every home that you, that you purchase. So we're here to assist you with that to make sure uh, we meet your needs. We get you the right coverage. We shop things around so we can uh, save you both time and save you money. We have over 40 insurance carriers. We're always looking to find the very best deal and the best coverage. Uh, for any of our members or anyone that we work with. If you bundle them with auto, home or auto, we can save you even more. So, you know, please do consider that at michiganfirst.com slash insurance uh, or the phone number up there as well. Uh, again, I want to thank Justin and, and Milton for speaking and sharing their knowledge with us and, and showing you. I love the Lions references. So uh, thank you all for attending. Have a great day. And if you do want to watch this uh, seminar again, you can go to michiganfirst.com slash mortgage-seminars for this episode and any of our previous or future episodes. Everyone have a great day. Thank you for joining us. You too. Bye-bye.